This week's episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to you by Slusho Brand Handheld Cameras. When you decide never to put the camera down during a giant monster attack that destroys the city you live in, make it Slusho Brand. When you absolutely need to record everything, even when all your friends and loved ones are dying around you and have blood pouring from their eyes because of a weird infection caused when they tried to save your useless behind from tiny crab monsters, make it Slusho Brand. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Kaiju Weekly, the weekly podcast that introduces you to the wide world of giant monster movies. I am your host Travis and with me as always is my co-host Chuckle Snuffle Pop. Hello everybody, how are you today? Oh that is awful, that is awful. No, never again. Never again. No, I'm going to do the whole episode in this voice. How does this sound, everybody? (laughs) Oh, no. Okay, we're going to replace Michael with a robotic voice now. (laughs) And... uh... (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, man. (laughs) It's... uh... It's going to be a heck of an episode, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun. It's, it's going to be real fun. I, I'm looking forward to it, actually. Uh, I have thoughts in my brain today about this film that we're going to be talking about. But before we get into that, I have to ask you, Travis, how are you? How are you doing? I am hurting, but fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. Uh, today today's a good day. I've been awake for a while, but and so I'm getting kind of tired. Uh, and it's past lunchtime, and I've only eaten a small thing, so I am ready to eat. Got to eat the food. I got to eat the food. <laughs> no, I, I totally to. get it. Yeah, I was telling you before we started recording here, and um, I'm not in my normal recording uh studio here in my office, aka my closet. Um. Because my back is just killing me, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I feel your pain, man. Um, but yeah, so uh, this episode we may not be at the at our highest energy. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm fine. Aside, aside from my back being a little sore from working in the yard this morning, I am fine. Well, we're, we'll see how it goes uh, with me. But um, yeah, let's jump into the news segment. Cue the beady beady. Cue the beady beady. All right. So uh, we are going to cover just two new stories uh, on the main episode today. Our first one is that we have a distributor for Howl from Beyond the Fog, the uh, independent kaiju film that was made last year and has been kind of making the rounds at different film festivals and stuff. We've talked about it on the podcast before this film. It's done with all puppets and uh, the, the oh, all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah all yeah. of the actors are done with puppets and everything. It's uh, it's, it looks very interesting. And I have been super, super interested in seeing this movie, mm-hmm. but because I didn't know about the Kickstarter back in the day when it was a Kickstarter, and I haven't had a chance to get an early, you know, copy of it to be able to watch it. Sure. I have been just hoping, hoping that we will get a U.S. release for this film. And now we have had it confirmed that SRS Cinema has licensed the North America home media rights okay. to this movie. So I'm excited. Does that mean we're going to be getting a, a dub track on this film? I'm assuming. I'm assuming we're going to get a, we're getting a du- an English dub track for the for the movie. I'm not sure about a dub. Um, we might we might get a dub. Now I do know that we're going to be getting a Blu-ray and a VHS special edition. Uh, and um, well, that's random. Yeah. Well, and, uh, a lot of movies have been doing that lately, especially like ones that have kind of this retro feel to them. Uh, mm-hmm. They've been doing these VHS special edition ones that you, they're like limited, uh, 
there's a limited number of them that you can order. I know what you're talking about, but I've always actually assumed, I didn't know they were actual VHS tapes though. I always assumed that, that what they were doing was they were packaging like DVDs or something mm -hmm. in a VHS like case. So if you're saying they're actual VHSs. Yeah, some some uh, some movies and TV shows have done like what you're talking about. The the just um, they look like a VHS, but it's still DVD or Blu-ray inside. Uh -huh. But there have been some that have put out uh, the special edition VHS copies. So um, yeah, it's 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 weird, um, but it is kind of like a uh, collector's thing that you know retro kind of collector's thing. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I can get on board with that. You know, being yeah, being a collector, having sort of that collector mindset. So yeah, I get, I can get that. I can get behind it just being a child from the era that VHSs <laughs> were the thing that you had. <laughs> I know, right? Like I, know, I remember like, the first DVD I ever watched. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that, but I do remember my, my first Godzilla DVD. Uh, I think I, I told this to Elijah. Uh, I think, I think it was Godzilla versus Megal. It was two because it was Godzilla versus Megalon and Godzilla versus the Cosmic Monster. Mo Cosmic Monster. There we go. Words, mm -hmm. which is the American title for Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla '74. Um, and I remember picking those up in the bargain bin at the Dollar General store. Oh wow! Yeah. So that was way back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so getting back to uh, Hal from Beyond the Fog, uh, s just so everyone knows, you can start pre-ordering uh, this, the Blu-ray and everything in September. Um, and it's going to ship in late October, early November, depending on your shipping and how good the shipping goes with the coronavirus. I know everything's backed up right now, but that's when it's planned to be shipped. And mm. then the wide release on DVD and VOD is planned for 2021. So sometime in 2021, we're going to be getting it on VOD. So if you're a digital person instead of a hard copy person, uh, it will be available digitally too. I'm both. I'm both. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I like hard copies of things. I like having the physical media, but mm. I just don't have room for it. I just yeah. really don't have room for it. So I have to go digital with a lot of things. No, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Like I have uh phys I have physical and digital copies of all my Godzilla films, except for like a couple. Um, some of the more some of the harder to find ones on Blu-ray and DVD, like Godzilla on Monster Island, which is the American uh, retitle of Godzilla vs. Gigan. Mm -hmm. Uh and Hetera. Is, are the only two that I do not have a physical disc for outside of the Criterion Collection, of course. Right, and I, right. You can't, and you can't get those on digital. Yeah. On the, you can't buy those digitally unless you have the uh, Criterion subscription. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, moving on with the news, uh, the only other bit of news that we're going to talk about this week on the main episode is uh, we have our first official Godzilla museum. Uh, it's been announced. Uh, now, according now, the news item that I have here it says it's been announced. Now, this was announced a while a while back because I remember. Yeah, it was seeing, months ago. Yeah, yeah I remember ago. seeing this. So, um, but it's uh, uh, it's on Awaji Island mm -hmm. in Japan. Uh, it's a limited attraction, and it's going to be open from August 8th, which is actually just yesterday uh, at the time of recording, through the 31st. So it's going to be open just this month. And it's going to feature at the museum, uh, it's going to have dioramas, props, a Chibi Godzilla children's exhibit, uh, Godzilla food collabs, and an exclusive gift shop. And uh, we saw some pictures online of this, and it looks really it is, cool. Yeah. It looks really cool. There was a big stand uh, there that had all of the Godzilla films minus 98. Boo. Um, all, <laughs> all listed. Yeah, it is kind of weird that, I mean, Toho, you can't, I mean, you can't pretend like it didn't happen. No. It's it, it it exists. Yeah. So at least put it at least put it's it on there. That, at least put right. it on it's there. It's a thing on. that exists. It's like the ugly, unwelcomed cousin at your family barbecue. Like no one wants to talk about him, 
but we all know he exists. And he's still in the picture. And he's still in the picture. And we're just kind of ignoring it. And yeah, we're that's that's a really terrible. I'm sorry, people. That's a really terrible <laughs> example. I'm so sorry for that. That fits more for for us Southerners because us Southerners have have those big family reunions, and oh, we yeah, always know, have right? we always have that one one uh, cousin that we just don't like, but he still got to <laughs> be in the picture because he's related to us. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so on that stand uh, on that display thing with all of the Godzilla movies. Like we said, Godzilla 98 is not listed, but Godzilla 2014 is listed. Godzilla King of the Monsters is listed and Godzilla versus Kong is listed on there. But then there are empty spaces. Well, not really empty spaces, but like spaces after Godzilla versus Kong that just have the Godzilla logo on them. So a lot of people have been speculating, is this showing that Toho's plans are to, you know, have another film uh, come out right after Godzilla vs. Kong comes out? Uh, what's, you know, is it going to be a trilogy? Is it going to be what, you know, it, this, this has started the speculation mill on, and the rumor mill on Twitter. And so I wanted to get your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on this, Michael? I'm sorry. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We're going to put that down as your thoughts. Oh boy. Okay. I'm so Michael's, sorry about Michael's hot take on, I was, on, I was trying to suppress that and I didn't mean to, I was, I was excuse me. I was trying to, uh, turn my head, but apparently I did not, uh, do it in time. <clears throat> like, you know, you, you noticed what I did with the, you whistling last week. <laughs> Oh, I know. I, I know. Which was actually kind of, it, which was actually really funny. I enjoyed that. But anyway, back on topic. So short answer, yes. I the plan has always been what to for Toho to reclaim the rights to Godzilla after GVK or at, at the very least collaborate. Well, I take that back. Isn't it doesn't Toho have some kind of investment now in legendary? Am I right? Yes, as far as I know that they they invested in legendary and so they have like a a um an interest in the in the uh, company and the in the productions, the film productions. Sure. So I really think that there's going to be I think Toho will make its own film after GVK because it just seems natural that Toho would would come out with its own film. Um what that film will be. I have no idea. Some, I think it was um, Eric that posted on Twitter ye- yesterday asking what we would like to see after GVK. And I told him like literally a shot for shot remake of Gojira 54, but using modern tokusatsu techniques, techniques and, and, and methods. That's what I want to see. And I think see- that would be a super fun and appropriate way to reboot the series on, on Toho's behalf anyway. See, I, and I don't think they should do something like that because we already had Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is not that old. It's only a a few years old. No, I'm not talking about that though. I'm not talking about that because that's all like, I'm talking literally C I'm not talking. Yeah. uh, Yeah, that's true. They did use a lot of CGI in, in it. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think we need to move. For me personally, I think we need to move into Godzilla versus other monsters. I don't think we need another solo Godzilla film because we had uh, Shin Godzilla, and Shin Godzilla. A lot of people love Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is a lot of people's favorite Godzilla film. So I don't think that doing another solo Godzilla film that's that's in the same vein as Gojira is going to go over well with people because it's like, well, you're, you're either going to do just as good as Shin Godzilla or worse than Shin Godzilla. And people aren't, are not going to be okay with that. So I think, I think we should move past the solo Godzilla films and go into a Toho produced Godzilla versus something. Now mm-hmm. what the versus something is, I don't know what, what he's going to fight. I don't know, but that's, that's where, that's where I think they should go. Well, let me tell you this, what it needs to lead up to the ultimate conclusion is Godzilla versus Gamera, because that has been brewing for decades, decades at this point. 
Yeah, and I just don't think that's ever going to happen, at least not not without a lot of hoops being jumped through. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you know that uh, Katakawa would have its own stipulation where Gamera can't die. And, of course, Toho is notorious for Godzilla can't die, although Godzilla has died before, but he's always been brought back. Yeah. It's weird like that. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I I I think I think that well in, in my head just because of the way we've seen them interact with um other companies and stuff I think Toho is the one that's probably not going to be playing nice if they were going to do that um whereas Katakawa might seem a little bit more like hey yeah let's do it um either way I, I I'm still I still expect us to get a new Gamera film sometime soon, especially if Toho is going into producing more uh, Godzilla films themselves, then I can see Katakawa and Daie Katakawa having the rights to them. Yeah, um, I mean, Gamera's, right now, Gamera, Gamera is on the upswing. So, uh, yeah, it would, ma- it would make take sense. advantage of it. Yeah, it would make perfect sense to in what, like 2022 or 2023, do a Gamera 4 or do some kind of or or just make a film adaptation of the um uh the last is it the last hope am i right the 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 comic yeah yeah uh the the comic that um matt frank did yeah yeah do like a film adaptation of that or just move forward with a a rebooted you know completely different camera because i mean they they, do that they, I don't know if we necessarily need to return back to that Heisei trilogy because we've already moved forward beyond that with Gamera the Brave. So why mm-hmm. not just keep going forward? You know, start something new and something fresh. But as far as this Godzilla display, it is fully possible that the extra spaces that they have after Godzilla vs. Kong is just there to fill in space. It's not there for to hint to anything coming down the pipelines. Yeah, but still, you know, Toho knows what they're doing. They know what they're doing because you could arrange those in a way to not be like that, I guess. Yeah. You yeah. Could you could do some, their graphics department could do something. They could have done something else to fill in that space there. They could have just had big white text, say Godzilla or in Japanese Godzilla uh, to fill in that space there. But why did they give us seven panels of film posters if they weren't trying to uh, tease us a little bit? I mean, that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I, I, I do think that, I think that they have something planned, whether or not this is particularly like, them saying, Hey, guess what? We have seven films, you know, planned down the line. I still think that they do have plans for Godzilla and, uh, after yeah, it's, Godzilla it's not going Kong. away. No, 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 no. It's not going away. He's a cultural institution at this point. I mean, right. Uh, he's a cultural icon. I mean, he won the MTV musical. He won the uh, legacy award. I think that's what it was called. The lifetime achievement award. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the MTV music awards in like 99 or something like that. And I know that's been, several years ago at this point, but it still shows that he has cultural significance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he has a, he has a star on the Hollywood walk of fame. That that's something King Kong can't say. King Kong don't yeah. have a star on the walk of fame, but God does. Are no. you sure King Kong doesn't? I, I am deadly serious. I looked this <laughs> up. I looked this up because I got into an argument with some, I know it's really terrible to get into arguments with people. On the <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Sorry, I am sorry. I am really surprised that King Kong does not have one and Shrek does. No, he does not. It's so it's wow. so weird that he doesn't. But bringing it back to this little bit of news item, I do think they have something planned. Yeah. What it is, I'm like you, I have no idea. But a, a versus film, a series of versus films does sound really enticing because I feel like we haven't gotten a good versus film in a while. Yeah. Um, bottom line, though, if anyone is in Japan, especially uh, Awaji Island, um, at any point this month, while this museum has its limited uh, opening, take it, take advantage of it. Um, be safe, but take advantage of it because who knows when, uh, you know, if, if this will 
open back up or what will change in between it closing down and opening back up. So take advantage of it. It's gonna, it looks like a look like a fun museum. Yeah, to be we a part have of. Uh, we do have listeners, Travis, according to our analytics in Japan. So there's at least somebody out there that's listening to us talk about it. Hey, hey, okay, that's good. I, I so so of the three listeners that we have, one of them is in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move away from that that whole shtick about the three listeners because if our downloads are any indication, we have a little bit more than three listeners. When more people start sending in mailbag questions and comments and stuff, then I will move away from it. But until then, <laughs> the three people who actually interact with us on a regular basis. <laughs> Are the only um, people who listen, as far as I know. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's move into our main topic now. Uh, so we asked the trivia question last week: What monster film was kept under wraps so well that the title was not revealed until four to five months after the first trailer dropped? And we had some listeners answer the questions um first of all elijah our friend elijah uh commented the big cheese aka cloverfield now the big cheese or the or cheese is a reference to that was one of the uh production names for cloverfield that it went under when it was on when it was uh trying to keep itself under wraps all right fun fact there you go there's a fun fact for you early yeah uh, Giant Monster BS said atop the fourth wall, the movie, hmm. which hmm. which I think is a top a top. Well, you probably wouldn't know this, um, but atop the fourth wall, I think is Lane Cara's old series that he used to do. Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a I think it's a TV series. Mm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was YouTube, um, and I'm pretty sure it was Lane Cara who who did atop the fourth wall. Um, but I might be, I might be wrong. You're uh, going to make me Google it. Bag on it. <laughs> uh, Kaiju Conversations sent us in Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, we've had the, t well, uh, if Godzilla versus Kong is the official title, then we've had the official title for a while, uh, but we still have no trailer. Yep. Uh, then we've got Monster Island Board of Directors. Um, said Godzilla versus Kong 2 Kaiju Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I love I love the funny answers. Uh, Nathan, who always sends us a funny answer, said question mark and the Mysterians. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. And then Jimmy from NASA said Avengers Endgame, which if I remember right, when the trailer dropped for Avengers Endgame, I know with the, the um, I think it was with the teaser trailers, they didn't have a title for it. But when the official trailer dropped, that's when they revealed the actual title for the film. But that's actually that's actually a good point that he made there, because Avengers Endgame was one of those ones where they didn't reveal the title for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. remember. Yeah, they had some like. They had a little bit of viral marketing, you know, like Marvel needed it at that point, but they had a little bit of viral marketing around that too. Yeah. I think a, a big thing that they said was that if the title of the next Avengers movie would have spoiled the previous one, if you had not seen it. So that's why they were holding, holding out for gotcha. a while. Um, drawing Zilla on Instagram said baby Muto, the revenge of the bug spray. <laughs> that actually is probably the most accurate answer we've gotten so far. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 close. It's definitely close. I like that one, drawing Zilla. Uh, and then MS Cat Mom on Instagram said, "Secret of Bigfoot Parts One and Two. Those are two episodes from the Six Million Dollar Man series." Oh wow, taking it all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we're getting down to Lane Howard on Facebook said, was it Cloverfield? And yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, Lane. Uh, Tristan Sewer? 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 Uh, I think it's Sewer. Sewer? 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 Sewer, maybe? sewer. Uh, sorry, Tristan. Um, but uh, he said Cloverfield, which was supposed to be like the American answer to the Gojira, to Gojira. And then Marie Mormon said Cloverfield. 
So you guys all got it right. So thank you all for sending in your answers, both the funny ones and the correct ones. Uh, we just love hearing from you guys. But yeah, our main topic for this week is Cloverfield from 2008. Uh, the It was directed by Matt Reeves, produced by J.J. Abrams. It stars Lizzie, Lizzie Kaplan, Jessica Lucas, T.J. Miller, Michael Stahl David, Stahl, Stahl David, I can't remember, that Mike, Mike Vogel, Odette Yustman, or Yustman, and the creature design uh, was done by Neville Page. And the plot breakdown is a group of friends venture deep into the streets of New York on a rescue mission during a rampaging monster attack. Now, let's get into our opening thoughts on this movie. I have something I want to say before before I know I know you want to you have a lot to, to, to say, too, but I want to say sure. Go for it. Go for it. I paid money to rent this movie. So did I. I have seen this movie before. I remember watching this movie. I remember this movie in detail mm -hmm. and I was like, uh, I could just, I could just go and, and, and just go by my memory of it and not even really watch it. Just go by the memory of it. But no, I need to watch it so I can make sure that my opinions are the same and nothing's changed and watched it. My opinion hasn't changed and there was <laughs> nothing in there that was different than what I remembered from years ago when I watched it. So it was a big waste of five dollars to rent that stupid movie. I could have had a five dollar foot long from Subway instead of renting this stupid movie. Well, I won't tell you how much I paid to rent it then. Yeah, I know you uh, paid more than me because you got the 4K edition. I didn't go 4K. I wasn't going to go 4K. Well, okay. So I said, I said to myself, Mike, you've never seen this movie. And I'm having this internal dialogue with myself that went sort of like this. Mike, you have not seen Cloverfield. You really weren't interested in watching Cloverfield when it first came out, but all your friends seem to really like it. But I don't know why you passed by it because it's a giant monster movie and you like giant monsters, but for some reason you just didn't watch it. So why not get the best experience that you could possibly get and rent the 4K UHD version for like nine bucks? And I'm like you, I could have spent $9 more responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, look, I don't hate this movie. No, 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 no. I well, don't hate it. No. But I do not like this movie mm -hmm. all that much. Right. It's, it's fine. It's, it's serviceable. It's fine. But ultimately it's just not one I really enjoy watching. I don't enjoy watching this movie. It's it's not, uh, it's nothing against the production of it. The monster looks great. Everything looks fine. Minus the shaky cam, but everything else looks fine. All the actors I think did a decent job. I just don't like this movie all that much. Um, so yeah, that's my opening thoughts. <laughs> And I agree. So thank you for listening to this episode of Kaiju. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And honestly, it automatically, like even before, even before I, I put this movie on and we'll get into some positives. We're just kind of, we're, we're riffing right now, but uh, this movie already lost a point for me just because of the fact of it's, I don't like found footage films. I feel like it's a it's a method of filmmaking that is overdone and can come off as cheesy. And with a giant monster movie where my suspension where where I have to already suspend my belief to believe this thing is real, to do so in a found footage style film is even more difficult. And we'll get into that in a minute because there is one big flaw with a found footage film that I don't th that a lot of us that watch these types of movies can't even get over. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and I do think that they, they kind of do like the hand waving of it. Like, Oh yeah. That's a, da, 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 da. but it's still, yeah, I'm with you. I don't like found footage films. I've never liked found footage films. I've never thought that they were all that interesting or unique or worth doing. The only thing that makes them, 
worth doing from a production point of view is the fact that they cost so little money because you can take a cell phone and do a found footage film. Yeah, uh, this film was done, what, 26000 I think I looked up the budget the other day, and it was like twenty six or $27,000. Uh, no, 27 oh Jesus no not that 27 million dollars whoa yeah. there we go yeah uh, which is which is still i mean that's still it's millions of dollars but it's a low budget film uh surprisingly because a lot of uh a lot of films nowadays i mean what was it uh, uh avengers endgame was 500 million dollars mm-hmm. so you know big budget movies are in the hundreds of millions of dollars and this movie was done for 20 million dollars that's so it is kind of a low budget film and the majority of that went into the special effects i'm sure because uh the the digital effects are not the cheapest in the world and it the digital effects look great no they did look great I, i'll be honest with you the the cgi i think i told you that i either told you this or i was thinking it and i wanted to tell you but i didn't tell you but the CGI even holds up better in this film than say Godzilla 98, Uh, Mm -hmm. the CGI in Godzilla 98. Although I have some nostalgia for that film, I can admit the CGI in that movie does not hold up to, to, does not hold up very well, which I would hope that the CGI is better because it's 20 years later. (laughs) This this movie came out in 2008 and then in 98 to 2008. Yeah. So I hope in the 20 years that CGI had gotten better, but, um, good getting into some positives. I like that the monster is done kind of like jaws, like the shark from jaws Mm -hmm. in that you only get glimpses of it. You never Mm -hmm. get a full view of it until towards the very end. Right. Yeah. I think that's really well done. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that is something they did really great. Um, what are some positives that you have? So some positives I had about this film, and I will agree with you that I did like the 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 glim- the small glimpses of the monster, right? I, I think the Jaws comparison is fair. I think it's I think it's actually fairly accurate. And the the main thing I do like about this film is not it is basically just how many films have been inspired by this afterwards. And I know that. Uh, in the Kaiju quarantine chat, they brought up where Cloverfield was used as an inspiration. You could tell Cloverfield was used as, as an inspiration for um, Godzilla 2014 because mm-hmm. you have those low angle shots, those those human uh, those uh, shots done from the human perspective, which I find really interesting. I, I think that's really interesting because uh, one of the knocks of giant monster films in the past was it's all. Uh, like for to use the the Heisei era for example, it's like you get these wide shots of the monsters duking it out, and it right. It's just there's no you're not immersed in any way. You're basically just watching a, a fight play out on screen. You're not you're not immersed. You're not uh, right. There's no ten, there's no tension for you. Uh, yeah, I think that that this film does a good job at creating tension, and I think that. Uh, um, you know, this, the perspective sort of that shaky cam, uh, cell phone video style is pretty accurate because I feel like to a point, that's how things would probably play out today. Like say a disaster happened like a giant monster and people would be reaching for their cell phones to record it. I don't know if they would record it to the extent of this guy, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I I think there is a point where it's uh, it starts becoming unrealistic, but then we're talking about realism in a giant monster movie, and it's yeah. Um, my question is, do you think that the found footage, shaky cam style of filming, added anything extra to it that couldn't have been done in a with a regular filming? like the regular way of filming with a regular camera. No, and and that's a, and and, you know, that's a really fair question because I've heard that brought up before. I've heard that question about this film brought up before. And yeah, the answer is, I think there, you know, given how movie, how movies have evolved since the, since this film and even films prior to this, 
I think that it's absolutely possible to create sort of that tension and that unsettling sort of atmosphere that this movie is trying to go for without the shaky cam and without the found footage aspect of it. Right. And, and, and because people for found footage, uh, apologists uh, for lack of a better word, I mean, there's nothing wrong. If you like this type of filmmaking, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's I, fine. That's your, it's taste. just some, yeah, it's a taste thing, but for me, it doesn't do anything special other than just make people sick who are sitting in the theater, which <laughs> did happen. It made a lot of people sick sitting in the theater and it shaking so much, but, um, you know, people who, who like this type of filmmaking will use the argument that, well, it makes it feel more personal. You feel like you're a part of it, but then you have movies like, uh, well, like we just reviewed not too long ago, the movie underwater. And there are moments in that movie where I felt trapped underwater with them mm -hmm. because of the, the way they shot that film. And none of it was shaky cam. None of it was sound footage. Um, there are moments in uh, there's a great horror movie that uh, is is absolutely one of the one of the few horror movies that actually makes me uncomfortable to watch because I just uh, yeah I'm not a big ho horror doesn't affect me all that much. But um, is uh, the Descent, and there are moments oh, in that yeah. where yeah yeah I I get to where I can't breathe. I can't breathe in yeah. that watching that movie because I feel like I'm trapped underground with these women who are the stars of this movie. And, and so it's such a, there are movies that can make you feel like you're a part of it, even without the shaky cam, without the, yeah. the uh, found footage. Now, the other side of uh, uh, the other argument that's made is like you were saying, making it feel very realistic, making it feel very, he said that it uh, are the oh yeah that it captures uh, the mood and kind of the the uh, um, the anxiety of what's going on. In right. Yeah. It's like that. It captures, uh, and I think that's one of the positives about this movie is it um, it captures that sense of anxiety. It can't. It and it also captures that sense of urgency. Uh, right. But I think I think you can capture that sense of urgency and anxiety without the shaky cam. I think there are plenty of movies out there that that give you a sense of urgency and give you a sen sense of anxiety without needing the shaky cam. So it just goes back to the idea that I just don't think that I think this was a novelty that was yeah. kind of an up and coming thing. Well, it wasn't really up and coming. This was kind of like right before the peak of found footage and so I think it was a novelty that they decided to do because it was, it was easier and lower budget and mm -hmm. it was something that had never been done before in a giant monster movie. Yeah. But at the same time, for me, I just think it was unnecessary. It was an unnecessary right. way of doing it. I think Michael Bay, uh, love him or hate him. I actually don't mind Michael Bay, but I think in an inter didn't he in an interview mentioned that he wanted to make the American equivalent to Gojira. Um, Oh, you're you're talking not not Michael Bay. You're talking about um uh, um, JJ JJ Abrams. JJ Abrams, not why did I say Michael Bay? I'm there's so a there is a huge difference I'm between so JJ Abrams. <laughs> um, That's okay. It's okay. Names, words, words are hard. Yeah, words are hard. But anyway, JJ Abrams said he wanted to make sort of the American equivalent to Godzilla. He wanted to um sort of give that sense of panic and urgency and um, to a point, I think this movie was successful at that. It, uh, but I, it really just comes down to personal preference for me. I don't yeah. like shaky. I do not like found footage and shaky cam videos. I just don't. I didn't like it with the Blair Witch Project. I didn't like it with, um, uh, what is it? Um, the Paranormal Activity series. Oh, um, yeah. I, I just don't like it. I, it's just a personal preference for me, but I yeah. see what they're trying to do here. And I told you privately in the chat, I said, look, this is sort of like this. They're totally different films, right? I get that, but it sort of comes down to this for me. This movie has had so much potential, but I just feel like the execution wasn't quite there. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of how I feel. I feel like this movie 
if it wasn't for the way that it was filmed, this movie would have flown under the radar for everyone. I think mm-hmm. that it was the shaky cam, and, and maybe that's being yeah. unfair. And and I'm I'm perfectly fine with saying that may be an unfair thing to say, and people can come at me if they want to, um, at Kaiju Weekly on Twitter. Um, but I don't think I think that if it wasn't for this movie being found footage style, that it would have gotten the attention that it got, and would have had the impact on. Uh, the zeitgeist that it had yeah, because it, it was just, just another, it would just be another monster movie. It would just right. be another giant monster movie. And I think what and, adds and really, well, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say one more thing. Uh, and really at this point in time, there were no giant monster movies happening. We didn't no, really no, have no, no, giant monster movies going on. So I I'm fully, fully happy with the fact that this kind of, in a way, jump-started um, p- more people's attentions or more people's interest in giant monster movies uh, in America. But at the same time, I just, I think that it would have been ignored if it wasn't for the novelty of it. No, and I think that's fair. I think that's fair because, like I said, um, I, I feel like the marketing behind this film was better than the film itself. Because I do remember the marketing for this film. I remember the oh yeah. I remember the TV stingers, the the posters with just the the headless Statue of Liberty. No, no name, no title, no not no. Mm-hmm. It may have had a release date. I don't know, but I remember the, the viral marketing to this movie, and it's very similar to what Legendary did with 2014 and Monarch and and the Monarch website and all that. Um, because you know, like I said, people have learned from, have learned good things from this movie. Right. Because, you know, and you're right. There was no, there, like you said there just a second ago there at the time there, this, there was no real American monster movies. What was it? This was 2000 and this was 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. I don't even think Toho or Daye at the time or Katakawa was doing, uh, any giant monster movies either. So, this was the this was probably literally the only giant monster movie out at the time, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know that for sure. I'd have to go back and look. So, uh, if someone actually knows that, uh, please. Uh, um, message. Well, I, I I can't think of any other big monsters, but I know that um, this would have been the in between period when Godzilla: Final Wars came out in two thousand and four. Mm-hmm. Was it two thousand and four? Yeah, two thousand and four. Yeah, two thousand four. And so there wasn't another Godzilla movie, Toho Godzilla movie, until uh, 2016, 2017 with Shin Godzilla. Uh, and then there was, uh, we had Gamera the Brave in 2006, which was two years before this film, which did not really make an impact on, on the American you know, audiences. It didn't really make it to America uh, to other than to fans. Right. So... So, yeah, there really wasn't any big named. I mean, you know, 2005, which was a few years before this, was uh, um, the King Kong. Uh, uh, what is, oh, what you call it? yeah, 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 yeah. The Peter, Peter Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, Peter yeah, yeah, Jackson yeah. one. Um, but that was still that was still a few years before this. And so, yeah, it just seems like, you know, that was a that was that dark period when we didn't really have any giant monster movies that were making it big. And this one. So I so I am glad it exists. I will say right. that I am, I'm glad it exists for what it's done for giant monster yeah. movies in the modern day. Yeah. Since we're I'm having a, sort of a since we're having sort of a free a free a free flowing. There we go. Uh, conversation here. What did you think about, because I got some thoughts about the human characters. So let me ask you, what did you think about the human characters, Travis? Um, they were serviceable. I mean, I, there were times when I really did feel for them. Like, you know, they, cause uh, the, the film does put you in their shoes and make you feel for them. So I, there were times the one that I feel the most for was Marlena. Marlena, oh, yeah. poor Marlena. The woman is traumatized. Woman was not supposed to be there. And then, spoiler alert: the way she dies is such an a horrific thing. It's like, what did what did the producers have against Marlena? Because <laughs> it's just like she just got the raw end of the of the deal here, man. Yeah, for sure. 
For sure. And this movie's full of uh, folks. Like, you ever have those moments, Travis, where you're watching a movie or you're watching a TV show and you're like, oh, it's that guy or it's, oh, it's that girl, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that movie has a few of those in it. But yeah, I think well, you're right. I think you're uh, right that we have similar, I think we have similar thoughts then. I, I thought maybe we would stray a little bit, but we have similar thoughts. And yeah, they were serviceable. But honestly, I didn't really care about them. I didn't care about them that much. Like they didn't make me want to care about them. Honestly, the only character I really cared about in this movie was Beth. And we didn't see Beth until like an hour into the film. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, when they went and rescued her. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, It's one of the, one of the few times when TJ Miller's not being uh, obnoxious and he wasn't? to the point where, I mean, he was obnoxious. Uh, T.J. Miller is not going to be obnoxious. I don't like T.J. Miller, to be honest with you. I think he, I, I you know, <laughs> this film has a set of the the character. I don't know if it, I don't know if it really has the the typical character archetypes, because but there are archetypes within this within this movie because you've got the token party girl, you've got the handsome, I'm getting my life together and moving out of here guy. You've mm-hmm. got the mysterious girl uh, who doesn't really, who's not supposed to be there, but has been thrown into this uh, horrible situation. And then yeah. you've got the, and then you've got the loudmouth friend, and then right. you've got the girlfriend. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it, it 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 definitely has those uh, horror movie archetypes. You're exactly right, and the the characters I didn't mind once the, all of the uh, once all of the the destruction and and everything started happening but yeah. the entire beginning of this film i could care less like the, when they're at the party yeah i yeah. could care less about that honestly yeah it's just it's a bit i told you it's a big party for privileged white kids to be <laughs> awkward and sad about being privileged <laughs> and white now to be fair they weren't all privileged <laughs> white kids but all of the main cast Minus a, a couple of it were all privileged white kids who were just sad or awkward about being privileged. I, f- I just found like, it really interesting that our main male protagonist was getting ready to leave New York to go take a job in Japan. I thought yeah. that was really interesting. I don't know if that was a wink and a nod to uh, giant monster movies from Japan, but I like to think it was. Yeah. Well, I think we're talking in circles for the most part with this movie because we don't really have much to say outside of what we've already said. So let's uh, let's go ahead and move on if you're ready to move on. Uh, yeah, let's to, go for it. Yeah, let's move into some fun facts. Now, I have a few fun facts here. Um, one fun fact I really liked was the head of the Statue of Liberty that's shown in the movie is actually 50% larger than what the actual Statue of Liberty is. Uh, head is and that was because during the um initial trailers when the teaser trailer showed the head of the statue of liberty landing Mm -hmm. that people started complaining that it looked too small and so they actually made it bigger but in reality the head of the statue of liberty is not actually that big it's right it's you know, comparatively, it's you know people just imagine it being bigger than what it is. So they actually had to make it bigger in the movie to fit people's perceptions of it. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, all of the main characters have MySpace pages, or at least they did have MySpace pages at the time. So that was kind of cool. It kind of showed how these uh, this movie was advertised using the social media that was available at the time. I think I remember that. Like I remember my friends following them on MySpace. Oh wow. Uh I never did MySpace. I skipped MySpace altogether. I skipped I over dabbled. MySpace when <laughs> Yeah, I dabbled a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. Um and then uh something else that's really interesting that people who watch it may not notice right off uh, the bat, but this film has no music score. There is no music uh, in the background. Crap. Yeah, the there there is music playing at the party, but it's it's music that's you know being played at the party. So it's right, like right, right. Um, it's in the scene, 
uh, and there's no other music until the end credits. And at the end credits, the music doesn't start until about a minute and 30 seconds after the credits start rolling. That's when music's, that's when the music kicks in. That's yeah. I didn't really know for some reason. I don't know why I didn't notice that, that there was no score for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things that you don't necessarily notice, uh, um, unless you're looking for it, but that's one of the things that adds to the kind of realism and anxiety uh, feelings that you get in this movie is because there is no score. There's no cinema score. It's just the sounds of what's happening on screen. And so that kind of, that, that is a way of bringing you into the film and making it feel more realistic. Mm -hmm. And I uh, don't think, and, and movies have done that before where they don't have a score, like paranormal activity didn't have a score. Or mm -hmm. even, like typically these found footage films don't have a score because right. it takes you out of the realism. Right. Yeah. It takes away the realism of it. Um, Cause the whole point of this is to make it seem like it's a real thing that actually happened. Mm -hmm. um, now uh, this film was shot in Los Angeles and in New York uh, in Los Angeles. It went under the fake titled slush show, which is an ongoing kind of um, Easter egg that JJ <laughs> Abrams puts in all of his films. His slushy company. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was from, uh, it started in alias, the TV show alias, and it's been a, uh, like an ongoing kind of Easter egg in all of JJ Abrams, uh, yeah. produced things. It's uh, like, and, um, it's like, uh, what's, um, Quentin Tarant is it Quentin Tarantino in the cigarette? Yeah. 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 I can't so it's remember. Like that. Yeah. Uh, and then in New York, it was under the fake title of cheese, which we mentioned, uh, earlier. Which um, kind of makes sense because if you get a really good look at Clover, mm -hmm. he kind of looks like an um, he, he kind of looks like a mutated mouse. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> um, I mentioned about the severed head of the Statue of Liberty. Um, that scene of the Statue of Liberty's head being thrown into the city was inspired by the poster from 1981's film Escape from New York. Uh, which showed the head of the Statue of Liberty lying in the streets of New York. Uh, Matt Reeves, the director, said that it was an incredibly provocative image. Um, he remembered that poster being a, a provocative image, and mm -hmm. that was the source that inspired producer J.J. Abrams to mm -hmm. say, now this would be an interesting idea for a movie. So that kind of, uh, so Escape from New York helped inspire uh, Cloverfield in that way. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it is an incredibly provocative image. And really, when this movie was done, the wounds of 9-11, not to get too deep into the weeds there, but the wounds from 9-11 were still pretty fresh. So mm -hmm. th that kind of imagery, um, that kind of yeah. imagery is, is very, was very effective. It still is to this day, but back then, especially, it was really effective. Yeah. And speaking of slush show that we mentioned earlier, uh, Jason, the character Jason, actually wears a slush show t-shirt. Uh, through the movie. So we get, we get that reference from there too. Oh, I didn't uh, notice. I didn't notice yeah. the t-shirt. Not really. Uh, the film's final title Cloverfield is the name of the exit that JJ Abrams takes to his Santa Monica office. Uh, in turn, the road used to lead to this uh, used to lead to the Santa Monica airport, which originally bore the name Clover field as two words. Oh, okay. So uh, that's where the, the name Cloverfield comes from. Also, it's kind of an interesting thing because after a nuclear um, strike or after a nuclear accident, clovers are one of the first flowers that comes back to an area. So it could be also a reference to the fact that they, they use nuclear weapons to take the monster down in the end. Yeah, I mean, that, that would not surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me at all because you, I can see a scenario where yeah, they they if you nuke the area and you say that clovers are the first flowers to come back after the destruction, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, so that's all the fun facts I have. Uh sorry that my energy level is kind of dropping. Everybody. No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine, man. I just but I, I, I do I feel like we would be sort of remiss if we did not talk about sort of the monster design just just for a few minutes at least. Um what did you think about the design of Clover? And we'll go ahead and lump the uh, the little crab creatures, the the little yeah. crab, the little crab creature things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. 
Well, so, okay. At the time that this movie came out, I think that the Cloverfield monster was unique. Okay. Um, but it has been a, it's a design and a, and a, and a, a look that has been used for a lot of different monsters since then. I mean, if you look at, um, uh, was it super eight, the monster from super eight. If you look at the monsters from, uh, um, was it, Oh shoot. The, the quiet, a quiet place. Um, it's it's kind of like a design that's been done a lot now, and so it doesn't feel as original as what it did at the time that it came out. And so I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I think it was a, I think it was a, it's a unique design, but because it's been used for so many things since then, it doesn't feel as unique as what it did at the yeah. time that it came out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely not. I tell you what, it, I, it, I, it's definitely not one of my favorites, and really, it kind of reminds you in a way of the, um, oh, what is that thing called, the uh, Crustaceosaurus from uh, Godzilla the animated series, like one of the very first kaiju that shows up in that. That oh bi- yeah 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 it's like a it's like a crab like a, a bipedal crab. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, you're like right. That. It does it does kind of look like that. Yeah, you're um, right. But, you know, I'm, I, there are so many avenues they could have taken it that I wish they would have. Uh, I'm just not a fan of Clover. And I know, look, I know that the monster is supposed to be adolescent, right? I, it's mm-hmm. supposed to be a baby, technically. Right. Um, because we later find out that, like, they grow to be much, much bigger. Um, And I just don't, I I don't find this skinny legged fleshy creature to be as indestructible as this movie is letting on. Right. Right. But it's a monster movie. So I have to suspend that disbelief just for a little bit. Right. To make it, to make it to the, the final conclusion. So, yeah, I mean, it just, I'm not a fan of it. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Actually, I, I, feel like the I feel like the film would have been way more entertaining if it would have just had the little crab creatures that were falling off of it which actually did we ever I can't remember did we ever find out what the origins of this monster is is it from the ocean or is it from space I can't remember yeah it's from the ocean I, I there was a, a manga uh-huh. um, that was a prequel to it and uh, it comes from deep, deep, deep down in the ocean. Yeah. And um, the little creatures that are attached gotcha. to it are just parasites. Gotcha. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was from space or from the ocean. I wanted to say from the ocean, but I was not 100% sure because it's been a little while since I've watched Paradox and um, uh, what's the other one? 10 Cloverfield Lane. It's been a little bit, I think. Yeah. Which, which those movies aren't really tied to okay. this one anyway. Um so it doesn't really, yeah. So even watching those wouldn't make a difference, but yeah, it's the prequel mm-hmm. comic book or manga that gotcha. explains well, its helpful. origin. That's helpful. And, um, I, yeah, I, go ahead. So let, let's get, let's go ahead and get into final thoughts. Cause we, we need to uh, move along. Cause we got, we got some sure, stuff sure. that we want to do at the end of the episode. So, um, getting into our final thoughts and our Godzuki scores. Um, now for anybody who's new, uh, to the podcast, we like to rate our movies out of five Godzukis instead of out of five stars or five whatevers, five <laughs> egg rolls. Um, uh, we use we use Godzuki because Godzuki, who is the bumbling nephew from the Godzilla animated series from the 1970s, uh, we want we like to embrace the silliness of kaiju films and pay homage to that great monster who can barely fly uh <laughs> by using him as our yardstick for mm-hmm. rating these movies so out of five godzukis what would you rate cloverfield and what are your final thoughts michael <sighs> okay so i'll give my score first my score is literally um three out of five i'll be for for what for it is perfectly serviceable as a giant monster movie, it does some things very well. Uh, and it, it is entertaining. There are some dry parts specifically toward the beginning when we're trying to get to know sort of who our protagonists are. 
Um, but I'm not going to really knock that because of what this film was supposed to be. Um, but I can't give it a perfect score because of the fact I just don't enjoy found footage films. And like I alluded to at the beginning of this episode, there's a big flaw in found footage films that is, that is found in almost every one of them is at some point lay the freaking camera down. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was fine. I probably will watch it again eventually. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's fine. It's a completely serviceable giant monster film. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five Godzuki's because I, like I said, I'm not a big fan of this movie. I appreciate the effort that went into making the movie. I do think it's a fine monster film, but I feel like the found footage again was dated Mm -hmm. even at the time that this movie came out. Uh, I don't feel it added any depth to the movie than would have been there if it was just shot with a regular camera. Uh, The movie does manage to make me feel for the characters and I genuinely was rooting for them to survive at some points, but ultimately the movie did have some impact. It, It had some impact on the way movies are marketed and, you know, American monster movies are produced, but the movie doesn't really feel like it has the staying power that other franchises Mm -hmm. does to me anyway. Uh, And especially since like this movie is already overshadowed by its uh, somewhat Mm -hmm. pseudo sequel, which is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Like more people talk about 10 Cloverfield Lane than they do Cloverfield. So I feel like this movie's already overshadowed by its sequel. So it that kind of tells you that this movie just doesn't have the staying power that other giant monster movies and other franchises do. Um, and in my opinion, if you're interested in modern American monster films, there's better ones out there. There's better ones out there than this. And so I say go watch those and skip sure. this one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Sorry for being harsh. I know a lot of people do like this movie, but this is just, uh, yeah, I can't help it. I just, I just don't like this film that much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's our, that's our thoughts on Cloverfield. And uh, so we're going to close the book on this one. And I don't think I'm going to be coming back to this film. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily a disappointing entry in our uh, American monster August. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Mog- August, I didn't mention it again, but August we're doing all American monsters, um, American monster. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a disappointing entry in, in that. Um, it's just not my favorite. And like you said, there are better ones out there that take it, that yeah. take advantage of, of some of the themes that are trying to be expressed in this one. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a middling film and sometimes middling films are worse than just outright bad films. Like night of the Lepus is an outright terrible monster film, but I love it. It's fun. It's so bad. It's good. It's, it's fun to watch. Uh, whereas this movie is neither fantastic and a joy to watch, nor is it so bad that it's a joy to watch. It's just not a joy to watch at all <laughs> for me. Right. So anyway, uh, moving into the next segment. Do you know what the next segment is? From what I understand, it is Kaiju Club. Kaiju Clash! Yep, that's what it is. (laughs) 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 So, yeah, we're going to be doing another Kaiju Clash. Now, the last Kaiju Clash, we did mention it on a previous episode, but the last Kaiju Clash, once again, Michael won. Uh, Thank you. it Mm -hmm. It was Gyra versus... Uh, Toho King Kong and Toho King Kong overwhelmingly won. So this time around going with our, going with our, uh, 
uh, rule of the loser always goes first, which means I'm always going first. <laughs> right. Uh, we're going to be doing Clover, the Clover Monster or Clover uh, versus Zilla or G98 Godzilla. And because I gave the movie such a glowing review, uh, I was given the uh, the privilege of defending Clover. So why I think Clover would win in a fight against G98? Hmm. Well, let's see. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got to define terms here. We have to define terms a little bit. Are we using the actual 1998 God, uh, uh, Zilla from the film or from the animated series? Because you didn't clarify. Since, since Clover is featured only in a movie, he does not have an animated series based around him, we're going to go with the movie version. Dag on it, because that's going to change some mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. you wanted to pull out that fire breath that he he has in the in the animated series. Zilla doesn't have that in the movie. <laughs> well, technically, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He breathes, and a and a, a gas main explodes. That's not the same. <laughs> so. Uh, why I think Clover would win in a fight against uh, G98 Godzilla. Uh, first of all, Clover is way bigger than Zilla is, G98 is. And he's still a baby. We mentioned that he's just a baby and he's going to be growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. And he's already huge. Uh, he is super durable. It took nuclear weapons to take him down. No rockets, no airplanes, no buildings falling on him. No, nothing hurt that monster. It took nuclear weapons. And we only assume that nuclear weapons succeeded in beating it because that's when the, the film cuts out. We don't know. That monster could still be going even after being nuked by the government. <laughs> uh, it's heat resistant. There's, it's so heat resistant and I'm going to go ahead and let, I'm going to go ahead and let you, let you jump in now, uh, because I've got a few other things. Okay. There. All right. Well, I was just listening to you there. I, I was waiting, so just picking my spot a little bit. And what this is going to come down to is agility. G98 or Zilla or Godzilla or however you want to say, it, however you name him. Uh, or her, we don't really know. Um, it's he is a lot more agile than Clover is. Clover is this big, bumbling, two bipedal, uh, undersea creature who's not really doing anything to fight back. It's really just kind of running the whole movie. So there's no. I don't see any sort of aggressive, like aggressive uh, nature in, in this monster, at least aside from the typical stepping on things and they blow up or, uh, well, I take it back. He did eat somebody at the end. Okay. So I'll give him that. So there is that. He's but, eating people throughout. They said it, um, they said it early on that he was eating people, but it's going to come down to agility and, uh, Zilla being hyper aggressive. And I really think that uh, he, I really think that that part is what's going to win, win the battle between these two behemoths. Uh, yes. Clover is a little bit bigger, <clears throat> but I can see a scenario where um, uh, Zilla bury, buries under, buries himself underground and then just pops up from underground like he did in the movie and just guts G just guts clover see and i just uh, clover's skin is too durable it can't be penetrated that easily and i don't think even zilla's claws and teeth could penetrate i think if zilla tried to go in even going in for the throat i don't think he would succeed i don't think he could penetrate through clover's skin clover is too durable and yes sometimes agility does beat bronze and 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 just solid you know power but this monster is just too big and too durable 
and just mows everything down. Like you said, it's not really fighting back against the military. Why? Because it doesn't need to. The military aren't doing anything to it. They're not hurting it. They're not damaging it. They're not doing anything. So it's just going on its rampage without anything to stop it. So I just don't. And I'd also like to throw out that the parasites that Clover has on its body would easily take and attack Zilla and be able to take on Zilla. And that's just the parasites that are attached How to so? it. No, 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 no. How so? Well, okay. Let me, they may not be able to take on Zilla, but they would at least be able to, to hurt and distract Zilla long enough to where Clover could just stomp that tuna loving monster into oblivion no 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 you forget you forget in the in the movie uh zilla was able to to rake his claws into a a a submarine or a battleship and you know that you know that many many layers of steel like that it's not an easy task to do so i don't think that uh clover's hide is going to be that tough that yeah, he but can with bullets and rockets and stuff can penetrate through and tank, you know, shells can penetrate through submarines, but they couldn't penetrate through the skin of, of Clover. So obviously his skin is stronger than the steel and stuff that the submarines and other things are made out of. Okay. Well, I'm going to pull out a, I'm going to pull out something from our friend Sam, Sam's book and say bite radius, the bite radius on uh, Zilla has got to be it is pretty big and so there and so his jaws have got to be powerful enough to latch on and do some serious damage to clover have you seen the bite radius of clover clover's got some massive jaws too so i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say that's enough to to take it out but i also want to bring up one more point and this will be my my closing argument so how did how did Zilla G98 die in the movie. He got tangled up in a certain bridge and then fighter jets launched their rockets. Well, guess what happens in Cloverfield towards to really towards the beginning of the film, well, or at least early on in the film, you know what Clover does? He wipes out the Brooklyn bridge. He doesn't get tangled up in it. He just knocks it out of the way. And you know what happens when the jets come in to shoot at him and, and launch their rockets? He knocks them out of the way, too. So, obviously, Clover is more durable and can uh, survive. <laughs> look, people, listener, we all know how powerful Zilla is. We all know how intelligent Zilla is. We all know that even though Yes, Zilla did get, he died because of some attacks from some rockets. Okay, I'll acknowledge that. But we have to remember how much firepower he had already taken up to that point anyway, right? So, of course, his skin may be a little bit weaker at that point. But, like I said, it's going to come down to agility and it's going to come down to brains. And I just don't think that a mindless, bumbling, bipedal, sea arachnid, whatever the devil Clover is, is going to stand up to an intelligent creature that has some fighting skills. We've seen it already. Has some fighting skills, even not just the animated series, but in the movie itself. It's not going it, to, it's just not going to happen. It's just not, it's, it's, there's no reality that I can see where Clover beats Zilla. No, oh, yeah. A clo- uh, uh, Godzilla 98 definitely has some uh, fighting skills. We saw that in Godzilla Final Wars, didn't we? <laughs> That's a low blow. That, no, that is a low blow. Okay. Okay. I, I, okay. You're right. You're right. So, so we can go back and forth all day long on this, but, Really, ultimately, it's up to the listeners to decide who wins and who loses, uh, unfortunately, which is why I keep losing, because it's up to you guys, and you guys just don't, <laughs> you guys don't like me. Um, so, oh, now, Travis, come on. So, Michael, do you want to let everyone know how they can uh, vote and tell us who wins in this fight? 
Absolutely. And what's going to happen is I we are going to take this audio. We're going to post it as a as its very own YouTube video. And I'm going to share that video or we're going to share that video to both the Kaiju Weekly Twitter uh, page and the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. And in those groups, you, we're going to be uh, hold it, conducting a poll. So based on the results of that poll, um, we will determine the winner and we'll read out the results of that in the next episode or uh, an episode two weeks from now. Um, so what we want to, what we want to encourage you to do is listen to the, that particular portion of the audio that listen either to that episode, to this portion of the episode or better yet, go watch the YouTube video and make the, make the choice for yourself. And honestly, there's only one choice you can make here and that's to vote for Zilla. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> Zillow is not even good enough for the name Godzilla. <laughs> oh, which, I mean, to be fair, Clover is not really good enough for a name at all since they never named him in the movie. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it for Kaiju Weekly this week. The only thing we I want to do before we get close out the episode is to ask the trivia question for next week's episode. So the trivia question hinting to what we're going to be covering next week, continuing our American monster theme. Uh, the question is, Don Messick, the original voice of Scooby-Doo, also voiced a certain Kaiju's nephew in what 70s TV show? Mm. Ooh. Ooh, it's meta. So meta. <laughs> so meta. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can send us uh, your answers, even if it's not right, even if it's a funny answer. We will still read it out on next week's episode. And we would just want to say thank you to everyone for listening and sharing this podcast with your friends. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we are at Kaiju Weekly and Kaiju Group. And at Kaiju Groupie Pod on Twitter. Uh, that's me and Michael. And uh, all of our social links, all of the links to our social medias, as well as for the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group, are listed in the description of this episode. So you can go check them out. You can send questions, comments, or answers to trivia questions to our email, kaijuweekly at gmail.com. A big thank you to Alex, Shijir, and Thorax for supporting us on Patreon. You can also support the podcast at patreon.com slash kaijuweeklypod and make our dreams come true of getting to go to blob fest next week and getting to see <laughs> the blob the original blob still in the bucket i i must see the goo friends <laughs> listeners lend me your ears i must see the goo um so you can do that by supporting us on patreon.com slash kaiju weekly pod and michael you have something to say too oh boy okay so yeah if you guys listening enjoy this content, if you think we're hilarious, if you think that this episode or if you think this podcast is worth sharing with your friends and getting in front of other Kaiju and Tokusatsu fans just like you, you can do so by doing one simple thing. And that's going on Apple Podcasts and leaving us a five star review. Criticize us all you want, but do it five stars worth. And we promise. We will read your feedback on a future episode. Yep. And and please don't tell us if you think we're we're funny because our egos are big enough. And uh, no, no, there's no way. There's no way people actually find us funny. <laughs> Think for yourself, man. I'm hilarious. <laughs> I find myself funny. I don't think anybody else finds me funny. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah. Well, uh, that's going to do it for this week. So... Uh, to close out, I'm going to say help control the giant underwater monster pop, uh, population. Have your clovers spayed or fielded. <laughs> See you next time, guys. <laughs>